Welcome to my kitchen. And we're about to wash some uh, dirty makeup brushes. So I hope you all have your dirty makeup brushes ready to go because we're gonna wash them together and give you all my tips on how to wash your makeup brushes. And also specifically how to wash like my seven piece brush set with BK Beauty because I know some people have had a hard time washing this one and I totally get it. And I'll explain why this one's a little bit more, not like challenging to wash, but it takes a little more effort to wash this one. But I'll get to that in a minute. I'm gonna give people a chance to hop on and join. And hi, Adrian. Hi, Maggie. Hi, Amy. Andrea. You guys are all bright and early. So I know you can't really see my sink too well. I'll probably like lower my camera once I get to like actually washing my brushes. So um, there might be some adjustments going on like throughout this video because it's hard to do a live in your kitchen. <laughs> it's definitely like hard. So I really want you guys to all take the opportunity to ask me whatever questions you have about washing your brushes. So if you've ever asked me like, you know, through a DM or through um, a comment, like how to wash your brushes or what the best way to wash your brushes is, and you haven't gotten a response from me or I just haven't um, gotten back to you, please ask away in this video because it's gonna be just straightforward all about how to wash your brushes. And I have lots of tips. So let me kind of get into a couple things. Okay, so first, first, first things first, I'm gonna show you like the things that you need. Okay, like the things that I recommend that have always worked for me and it's gonna be different for everyone. Listen, if you go online, there's so many people telling you how to wash your brushes and what the only way to wash your brushes is or how you have to wash them this way. You could only use this. Do what works for you, okay? Like just do what works for you and do what works for your brushes. Your brushes will tell you if it's not working for them. Do you know what I mean? So like if you're doing, if you're using a, uh, some soap that's not meant for washing delicate brushes, your brushes will tell you over time, hey, this is not working for us. It's it's ruining either the, the glue, the brushes are coming apart, you're getting a lot of brush shedding. You'll know when something is not working. Okay, so now that I got that disclaimer out of the way, let me show you the tools and the things that I get out when I'm washing my brushes. So first things first is obviously, start with dirty brushes. I have a really nice, um, not overwhelming amount of dirty brushes to wash today. And I'm really excited for it because like this is like a not stressful amount of brushes to wash. Whereas usually I have at least like six, I usually keep my brushes in cups like this, like canisters. And I usually have about six of these filled with dirty brushes to wash. So this is a nice calm amount. I'll be able to answer some questions hopefully as I do it. So a couple things you should get. A towel. This is an old towel. So I don't mind if I, I would never use like a white towel just in case there's old makeup residue still left over on a, a makeup brush. But you need a good absorbent towel to lay your brushes on top of to dry. So you don't want to just put them on top of like paper towels. That's not going to be absorbent enough. You want to make sure you have a nice absorbent clean towel. So let me put this here. Hopefully you guys can see everything that I'm doing too. I know it's going to be a little bit of an odd setup. So Mitch says he could see pretty good. So, All right. My towel is laid out. It's clean. It's ready to go. Now, a couple of things I want to talk about. Let's talk about like the actual, like why we're here, which is what kind of soap to use. Okay. There's so many different, um, you know, soaps on the market that are expensive, that are marketed to uh, clean your makeup brushes. I've never personally gone that route. I think that they could be just really expensive. Oh, thank you, Erica. I think they can be really expensive and I think that the best um, soap has always been Dawn. Now I have a couple of th thoughts on Dawn, okay? And you might have like, if you really follow me and you like <laughs> watch all my videos, you might have caught that I said that recently I feel like Dawn has become like extremely watered down. and I truly believe this 100%. I think like in this last year, I've noticed I've always bought Dawn. I've always bought the blue or the orange bottle of Dawn dish soap to wash my makeup brushes. And I've noticed this year, the blue one, and it's supposed to be like the deep cleaning, all that stuff kind of like, you know, cuts grease and all that stuff. I've noticed it's so watered down that I was going through like half a container of it just to wash like one round of brushes. I'd have to like rinse and repeat over and over again. Whereas back in the day, like all the other years I used Dawn, it cuts the grease, literally, it sounds like a commercial, but it cuts the grease. It really 
always did a great job of breaking down liquid foundation, which is always really hard to get off of makeup brushes because it's um, a lot of them have oil in them and it just really sticks to brush fibers and it clings to them. It's hard to get that, that uh, product out. So anyway, a couple thoughts, okay? I went back on and let me tell you why. So when I thought to myself, okay, you know what? Dawn is not cutting it. I'm going through so much of it. It's completely watered down. Like they're just completely ruined the formula. And I really still believe this, okay? Hi, Nancy. So then I went to the Dr. Brommer's 18-1 um, Hemp Pure Castle Soap. This is a very concentrated soap, but it's also ridiculously expensive. And here's the thing. I think this is so expensive that I'm not going to continue to use this. I like it. It does a good job. It definitely breaks down makeup and product really easily. And it leaves my brushes feeling nice and um, like not like damaged or stripped or dried down, which is a big thing too. But I'm going to go back to my Dawn and let me tell you why. I blew through this bottle and this cost me like 25 bucks on Amazon. I blew through this bottle so quick. It, it's just not cost effective. So fine if you want to use it, but just a forewarning, this is not a cost effective way to, to clean your brushes in my opinion. But the bar soap from Dr. Brommer's on the other hand is fantastic, like absolutely fantastic. So this one's my favorite. It's a peppermint one. They also have like unscented if you don't want your brushes to smell like anything. And they also have lavender. I like the peppermint. It's just like really crisp and clean. I picked up a new one for this video because the old one I had broke in half because I, you know, when you're using the bar soap, you kind of tend to favor the middle and the center. And over time, it just breaks a hole down the middle and then it breaks in half. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so before we get into like washing the brushes, I wanna see if I missed any questions. I've always had the best luck with bar soap, yeah. So before I used the Dr. Brommer's all-in-one, whatever, bar soap, I used um, bars of Dove soap for years. And I really liked it, but the thing about the, the Dove bar soap, I always left it like a little bit of a soapy, filmy residue on the handles of the brush and I didn't like that. So I would go in afterwards with like one of those wet wipe, wet, wet one antibacterial wipes and I wiped down all the handles, which you should do anyway as a pro makeup artist. If you're using your makeup brushes on other people, it just helps to keep bacteria and um, you know, just dirt at bay. So do that and also do that if you're like more messy with your makeup and you tend to have makeup on your fingers a lot, you'll want to just go and kind of run through your brush handles with one of those wipes just to clean off like those fingerprints of makeup. Okay, but so yeah, long story short, I'm back to Dove, I'm sorry, I'm back to Dawn. And I still like this, however, I'm not gonna recommend it because it is so pricey and you go through it so quickly, okay? But I do recommend my new favorite, this is the Dr. Brommer's Bar Soap over my old favorite, which was Dove Bar Soap. So now that we got that out of the way, <laughs> I want to talk about spot cleaning too, because I get lots of questions about spot cleaning and how to do it. Can I use palm olive? You can, but I feel like palm olive does not do the trick, to be honest. I've used palm olive before in like a pinch, and I don't feel like it works as well as Dawn at all. So let's talk about, before I get into like deep cleaning, I want to talk about spot cleaning really quick. So to spot clean, I get asked all the time, like, is it good enough just to spot clean? Like this would be considered a spot cleaning product. It's Perry and Spirit. This one's my favorite. It smells like fresh cut oranges. It's like citrusy and really nice. But, um, oh, thank you. But a lot of people love the Cinema Secrets. It's like a blue liquid. I like it too. It just, it's really pricey. And again, I go through these things really, really fast. So I'm not like, I don't, I don't lean, I don't gravitate towards the Cinema Secrets as much as this one. I think this one smells better too. Just my opinion. They're both great. Okay, Mina's asking, how about Johnson Johnson Baby Shampoo? Um, I'm not a fan of Baby Shampoo for your makeup brushes. This is something that people have recommended for years and years. And they've always said just use Baby Shampoo because it's gentle. Here's the thing. Gentle is great, but you also need that antibacterial factor. And I just don't believe that uh, Baby Shampoo is gonna cut through um, a week's worth of foundation that's built up in your makeup brush. That's just a personal opinion. I think that anything that's antibacterial like that's supposed to like cut grease on a pan is gonna be your best bet. Now you wanna be careful, of course, like not to destroy your makeup brushes in the process of cleaning them. This is very important. So one thing I wanna point out too before we even get started is 
Don't ever, ever, please don't ever dump all your makeup brushes in a sink filled with water and let them soak. Don't ever do that. If you do that, your brushes, you're gonna start to break down the, there's glue and there's adhesive inside of these barrels, okay? And these are also wooden, like my brushes are wooden. Majority of the brushes that I use as a pro makeup artist are wooden handle. So these are very lightweight, but these are wooden base. And so the wood and the glue, if you let this just like soak in water to like clean them, what you're doing is that water is gonna seep down the barrel, okay? Down the ferrule of this, of the brush, this is the ferrule. It's gonna seep down, it's gonna break down the glue, which connects these two things together. And it's also going to warp your wood. So the wood, if you think about wood that soaks in water over time, it starts to spread and it's gonna help, it's just gonna start to break apart and your brushes are gonna get warped basically. So just don't do that. I see people do it online. I see people do it on TikTok and I'm like, why, whoa. I thought TikTok was where people like got good information sometimes and like, that's not what you wanna do. Don't soak them. Um, let's talk about spot cleaning really quick. So I got a little sidetracked. So I like to use Perry and Spirit whenever I'm in a pinch, okay? So if I'm like, let's say I'm on a travel job and I wanna just like spot clean my brushes really quick so I can use them instantly without having to wait for them to, to dry down and you know dry overnight on a towel. This is a great way to spot clean. And also if you're a makeup artist and you're really in a pinch and you need to clean your brushes, like again, in a pinch is how I wanna, I wanna stress that because you don't wanna rely on just a spot cleaner to deep clean your makeup brushes because it's not going to deep clean entirely. And also, if you're a makeup artist and you're only using this to spot clean, people might have a reaction to the leftover residue of this brush cleaner or any brush cleaner that's like a spray on brush cleaner. It could cause irritation to people who have sensitive skin because no matter what, it's gonna leave somewhat of a little bit of a residue on your brushes. So that's why I always recommend for you, if you're if you have sensitive skin or if you're prone to breakouts, or if you're a makeup artist and you're working on um, you know, the general population, you wanna make sure that you're deep cleaning your brushes and not only relying on a spot cleaner. But for those times that you need a spot cleaner, okay? I wanted to show you like how you'd wanna spot clean and I wanna show you a way that you should not spot clean, okay? So taking the product, this is just on some folded paper towels. I like to just get a little bit on the paper towels, okay? So I wanna show you something that I, I don't wanna see you do, uh, especially with a brush that's like handmade. These brushes are handmade and they're hand cut. So all my brushes and all of my BKB brushes um, or BKB brushes in general are hand cut. Like someone is actually hand cutting these brush fibers to make the shapes that they have. So you wanna be careful and you, want to just, you don't wanna destroy them. So what I don't wanna see happen is this, right? Where you just kinda of get it and you smash it. You never wanna just like, take the fibers, especially longer fiber brushes, and smash them. You don't wanna do that, because then what that does is it's gonna tangle up longer fiber brushes, so you're gonna start to see like tangles going through. Like they're gonna have to, you're gonna have to like kind of push them back down and lay them back flat. So with shorter brushes, so let's say you're cleaning like a shorter um, fiber brush, right? It's okay to smash because the fibers are shorter but when you're dealing with longer, more delicate fibers, like this is a longer fiber brush. These fibers are really, really long. So if you do that, if you smash it, you're just gonna end up tangling and damaging the longer fibers. So instead, what I highly recommend you do, okay? To start fresh here. So with longer fiber brushes, you wanna be gentle. You wanna go back and forth. I know, right? <laughs> it gave me anxiety doing that too. But it's good, it's good to demonstrate because that way you just know, like, you know, if you're being, you're, you don't want to be too rough. You know, brushes, they're not cheap. Good brushes are not, they're not cheap. I, and I know this firsthand, trust me. So take care of your brushes. So back and forth, just running it back and forth. This is a quick, easy, and more gentle way. And now you can go in there and just kind of go back and forth to get more in the longer fibers because this brush is a little bit trickier, like I mentioned. It's got a lot of long fibers throughout it. So there's a lot of chances for your makeup and your foundation to get caught in these brushes. So you wanna be careful. Now I prefer just to deep clean my brushes. I think it's a better way to do it overall and you're just, you end up being more gentle, okay? So let's see. Do we have any other questions about spot brushing, like spot cleaning before I move on? Yeah, there was a question about cinema secrets. 
Okay, Mitch is gonna help uh, it's, uh, ask me some questions that I might have missed. Paul asks, thoughts on Cinema Secret Professional Brush Cleaner, the classic blue one? And then, it's great. Does Cinema Secrets Cleaner land between spot cleaning and deep cleaning? No, Cinema Secrets, just like this one, is a spot cleaner. Any kind of cleaner that doesn't involve a sink and water is gonna be considered a spot cleaner. So now let's get into the nitty gritty. Okay, let's get into the actual cleaning. Oh, Barney says, hi, Mitch and oh, Stephanie. Hi, Mitch everybody. is here. He's actually here to help. He's been gone like every single Sunday and I've been gone every single Sunday too. Gosh, I'm gonna tilt my camera really quick. Hold on guys, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Okay, that way you can just kind of see my sink at least. This is very tricky. I don't know how people do this kind of stuff. Oh, sure. How's that? It's pretty good. Is that okay? Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. We'll, we'll scoot the camera back. Back? Like that? I um, I, okay. I think it's fine. Yeah, but I mean, you're covering a lot of the scene. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is what I like to do. I grab a bowl, and here's why. So I'm going to take... A little bit of water, just a little bit, and a little bit of Dawn, actually a lot of bit of Dawn to be quite honest, okay? And I forgot to grab one more thing. So it's water and Dawn. What do you need? And now I need to grab the cutest little um, silicone cleaning pad. I keep it under my sink. Mm -hmm. So what's funny is it just, I don't even know what the brand is. Oh, the brand is Beauty Concepts. You can get these on Amazon. I'll link um, different options in the description of this after this video is done. And I say, I say lukewarm for water, but people have different opinions. I say lukewarm is nice. You need to have some bit of like warmth to the water because you know when you're washing dishes and if you're using cold water just to feel like the suds are sudsing, do like lukewarm. So anyway, this is like a silicone little brush pad. It's got little suctions on it. So what you can do, let me try to show you, is it suctions to your sink. Can you do it on the back wall? No. Oh. Because I can't angle my my arm like that. Okay, and one more thing I have to oh, that's grab. Good. That's good where you got it. This is very optional, okay? But do you ever have like brushes that are filled with like either um, like a waterproof supping? Like anytime you have a brush that has like a waterproof let's say like a waterproof liquid lipstick or like a waterproof gel eyeliner and you can't get it off with just like your Dawn or your bar soap, that's when you pull out the olive oil and I'll show you how to use this in, in, a, in a little bit. This is more of like towards the end if you really, really need it, this is a great option. Um, and you, you utilize this a teeny, teeny bit, okay? I start with olive oil too, yeah, it's, you have to have it on hand just in case you need it, right? Okay, so I got my brushes. Now you don't need to wash one brush at a time. That's just not um, effective for your life and your time. I usually wash, it just depends on the kind of brush. Like if it's an eyeshadow brush, like my eyeshadow brushes, I'll probably wash like six or seven at once, okay? But if it's a complexion brush, I'll wash three at the most. That way I know that I'm really getting in there and getting them nice and clean and I'm not, um, but I'm also being like effective with my time. Okay, I'm gonna run them. And the soapy water, it's like I'm making scrambled eggs. <laughs> this just helps to soften that old dried up foundation that's in your complexion brushes. It's gonna break down that stuff, um, break down that old product. And I kind of go back and forth, literally like you're making scrambled eggs, okay? Uh, the brushes are synthetic. And then I'll go, and I like to feel the brushes in the palm of my hand. Some people wear gloves to each their own. If you wanna wear gloves, if you're grossed out by this, then wear gloves. I don't like to wear gloves. I need to feel what I'm doing. So I always try to keep my brushes, and this is kind of hard to remember, okay? But you wanna to try to keep your brushes facing down. That way the water is not gonna seep all the way up and drain up and drain down into the barrel. So face them down, okay? Now you can either use your hand or if you wanna just Save some time, get a little scrubby pad, and you go back and forth, and don't be, you know, don't smash it into the scrubby pad. 
be nice and gentle. And now we gotta run the water, so hold on. This is where you rinse. Facing down. Now usually, I don't have to rinse it. I don't have to repeat usually, but you know, every once in a while, if the brush has not been cleaned for a couple weeks, you'll have to rinse and repeat, okay? So now, this is important. You wanna make sure you squeeze out the excess water. And if you, at any point you still see suds, you know you haven't rinsed all the soap out properly, okay? So I'm still seeing a little bit of suds. So I'm gonna go back, facing down. Hi. Same thing. Squeeze the water out. You always want to make sure you squeeze the excess water out because they'll dry so much quicker. Nikki's brushes on TikTok shop went down to a little over 100. No way, Kim. I keep telling everyone if you want to get them, get them on TikTok shop because they're such a great deal. It's crazy. Okay, now there's still a little bit of foundation right here. So, but those guys are good. So let's take the bar soap, okay? With the bar, just run it back and forth. So let me um, actually let you know why I use bar soap too. The bar soap is kind of, it's like the second option. So it's my second option when I haven't gotten all the um, makeup off my brushes with just Dawn and water, that's when I'll grab my bar soap, okay? And just do my second round with that. And the Dr. Brommers, it suds up wow. unbelievably. All right, so that was I almost says, enough. Should I always use water? Ask uh, A, William. Amy? Amy, yeah. Ask her what she needs Amy, what was your question? Oh yeah, Maggie, good bar soap is uh, key. I mean, it's like, it makes it so easy. I got a second set of TikTok shop. You did, Adrian, that's amazing. All right, now I can actually, after the bar soap, I can actually feel that these brushes actually squeaked. They're that clean. Okay, so they're, this brush is clean. There's no more makeup residue in the fibers. She's nice and clean and ready to be dried. Squeezing out the excess. Um, Nancy, they make unscented, but I really like the peppermint. I like anything pepperminty. It makes me feel like I'm like very clean, like extra clean. Peppermint or citrus is my jam. Okay, so now they're laying flat to dry. These guys are done. Now I'm gonna take three more like-minded brushes. These are my N15 brushes and they are all filthy. Like absolutely. This one has so much bronzer in it. This one has so much bronzer too. Um, you know, everyone's recommending the Zote soap or Zote, whatever it is. I haven't used it, but I'm open to using it. I just think that the Dr. Brommer's bar soap, if you're gonna do a bar soap, it's like a holy grail. Okay. Oh, Amy's asking, should I always use water with Cinema Secrets or Parisian Spirit, or would I, or would that just be spot cleaning? So no, that's just right. spot cleaning, Amy. All right, I'm gonna do another round. Let's just dip into this soapy water. Ken is asking, can I use bar soap in set edition or only in addition to? You can absolutely. I I just like to do both, to be honest. Like that's just. Huh? You gotta repeat the question. Whose question was that? Hannah. Hannah. Hannah, you can definitely just do bar soap. It, it's gonna come down to personal preference. I like to do a deep clean with the Dawn because I feel like it really does get like a lot of buildup and grease and it's like a great first step to clean my brushes and I like the way it suds up. It's very satisfying. But you can absolutely just do a bar soap. It's, it's kind of up to you. I'm just giving you two really great ways to clean your brushes. All right, so I'm gonna go run these on the silicone pad. Let me just lift it up so I can show you what this does, okay? It's got all these different grooves in it to break down product. <laughs> Rebecca says the Zote soap is too harsh. It was hard on my brushes. Okay, good to know. See, one great thing, I just wanna bring it back to the Dr. Brommer's bar soap specifically. 
the liquid is great too, but like I mentioned, I'm not gonna promote it anymore. I'm not gonna like tell you guys to use it because it's just, it's not a good investment. You run out of it really quickly and it's just, it's really expensive for the liquid. The bar soap's about four bucks a bar and it lasts you a really long time. So this is like great. Um, <clears throat> what I was gonna say about the bar soap is the Dr. Bromer's bar soap has, it contains some essential oils in it, like some natural essential oils. So your brushes won't feel overly dry. It won't uh, damage your brushes. It's actually like very nice and conditioning for your brushes. So, you know, you wanna use a bar soap that's not going to dry out your brushes. So I'm assuming the Zote soap is just too, um, too harsh. Okay, these guys are sudsed up. I'm going to rinse them facing down always. Kim, oh my, I almost bought a second set of Nikki's brushes. Oh, oh, the 106 is a, a fantastic brush. Terry, you can get the Brommers bar soap on Amazon. I got it. I get mine at like Vons. They have it everywhere. I think they have it at Target too. Okay, let's just make sure there's no more suds coming out of these. Oh yeah, we got lots of suds. So facing down, I'm being gentle. I'm gonna push the excess soap out of the brush by kind of moving the fibers back and forth. Anne's asking, uh, Anne's asking, a lot of bar soaps have a film. Does the bar soap you're using it not have a film? No, this one does not contain, a, this one doesn't give you a film. So that, and that's one thing that I was mentioning about um, why I stopped using Dove bar soap because it left a film on my brushes I did not like. Lisa, that's how you spell Brahmers, yes. And don't worry, I'll link everything so it's easy for you guys. I'll link it all in the description box when I'm done. Okay, so suds are out. My N15s are nice. Ooh, I got a little more suds. That's why you got to check. All right, leave them flat. And then I like to just dry off the handles right away. Cause you don't wanna lay your handles down and let them be and leave them sopping wet. Make sure you dry them off just a little bit. Okay, we have a lot more brushes to wash. <laughs> I'm gonna grab my eyeshadow brushes. And these are the type of brushes that I suggest just like knocking out and washing together. Okay, so these are all like-minded brushes. I like to wash like-minded brushes together. I either use Dawn dish soap or a brush shampoo from CVS. Yeah, that sounds like a good, a good plan. I feel like it takes a turning to wash the set on my small brushes. Yes, it can for sure. I know Donna, but it's worth it. There's nothing like a clean, clean makeup brush. All right, these are really easy to wash. Anything that doesn't have to do with complexion products like concealer or foundation or cream, um, cream products are gonna be really easy to wash. Roll the towel on a roll. Yeah, I don't, I don't do the incline thing. I don't think that that's entirely necessary, but you can if you want. No, this is for synthetic and real fiber. This is how I wash all brushes. Okay, so I'm gonna just dry down the handle with my towel. That's why it's nice to have a big towel because you could like lift it up and really like dry down the handles too. Okay. Change out the water after washing a few brushes. She's asking. Oh, Maria, is it? I I do sort of change out the water. I didn't clean this enough. <laughs> water. Um, I don't need to yet. Maria? All right, so these brushes were a little bit more stubborn to clean. They had a lot of like eyeliner um, and just product on it. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna do a little rinse and repeat with the bar soap. Cause like I said, this is when I go in and I really get like that extra deep cleaning. Um, and I use it for anything that the Dawn didn't take care of basically. 
nine documents you lost your personal records after every week? Repeat your question while you know this is the Maggie's asking? Yeah. Those are clean out. So Maggie's asking, do I clean my personal makeup brushes after every use? Absolutely not. I probably wash my personal brushes. Well, to be quite honest, I wash I wash my personal makeup brushes after I've gone through all of them and all of my brushes are dirty. That's usually when I wash my brushes and that's just being fully honest. So, but let's say I had like just this many brushes to my name, which is like a normal amount of brushes to have for one person. I would be washing them every three to four days max. Okay, so like that's when you wanna kind of gauge it. Now, if you're using your makeup brushes and let's say you're doing like the same kind of makeup look, like you have a one, you have like a one to two kind of makeup look that you do every single day, meaning that, you know, your eyeshadow brushes are gonna have all like the same kind of colors on them. Like, let's say you do like a lot of warm tone browns. You're not gonna need to wash them <clears throat> after every use because you're not switching out your colors. Does that make sense? I hope that helps. Jackson, she washes hers once a, once a week, is that enough? I mean, it's better than nothing. I would try to step it up to two times a week if you can. But, you know, once a week is still something to be proud of because some people don't even wash them once a week, you know? So I'm not here to judge at all. B by Brittany, I wash brushes probably once a month. Oh my gosh, you gotta step it up, Brittany. Now I know it's hard. Okay, so I'm just sudsing them up in my hand now. Okay, mom here who doesn't do makeup every day when I say three, four days, I actually mean 24. <laughs> um, now let's talk about like, if you're a pro makeup artist, like if you're a makeup artist that's working on other people, I wash my makeup brushes. Any makeup brush that I use on a client gets put in a bag yep. and it gets put aside. And when I accumulate so many that I can't do a makeup application anymore, that's when I wash them all. They never get reused, yeah. reused ever. They always have to be like, if you were a, working makeup artists, sanitation has to be your number one priority, like period. So every single brush after each application, it doesn't matter if it's like something super simple, like a little bit of powder, they get put in a bag and they get washed and deep cleaned, not spot cleaned, they get deep cleaned. Let me rinse this off. What other questions did I miss? Oh, Tim says, if your N13 has become uh, my one of my faves, it's amazing. Kim says that? Yeah. Kim, I love that brush so much. I'm so happy you love it. That makes me so happy. Okay, so I'm just gonna squeeze. And speaking of N13s, I, wa I washed all my N13s, my N14, which is like my baby. This is my favorite brush on the planet. And then my N16, my concealer brush. Okay, so let me lay these flat to dry and I'll have Mitch go through the questions if I miss any. Did I miss any other questions? Oh, Michelle, Michelle said you ate Oh, thank you, Michelle. Oh, and Amy says, I absolutely love your brushes. They are so easy to use. Amy, that is so sweet. I'm so happy you're loving my brushes. Like, that is the best. And Tristan, yeah, we need to check in on being Bio Girl. How, how are you feeling? I'm gonna wash a couple more brushes. And actually, let me show you, let me show you how I would use and incorporate olive oil, just so you know, okay? I don't actually have any dirty lip brushes and it's usually dirty lip brushes that I've used on a client, like a lip brush where I've applied um, lipsticks. Lipsticks are, lipstick formulas and gloss formulas are extremely hard to get off of your makeup brushes, like extremely. So olive oil is usually when I'll, it's, that's usually when I'll incorporate olive oil to clean those type of brushes, if that makes sense. Also for um, waterproof mascara, I like to use a little fan brush and fan it into like my client's lashes that's extremely hard to wash off of makeup brushes as well. And also um, any kind of gel eyeliner is, again, very hard to wash off of your makeup brushes. So that's when I'll use a little bit of olive oil to do that kind of um, deep cleaning. But let me show you what, how I would use olive oil just in general. So hold please while I run this water. I'm gonna dump this out now. Okay, just a teeny bit of water. And I'm gonna lower this now for a second. Hold on. Sorry guys for all the back and forth. So I have a little bit of water in here, okay? So take your water, mix a little bit of Dawn, just a little bit. And this is also a great 
tool. Do you ever have those makeup brushes that you haven't washed in like six months, three months? I know that you guys are out there because I, I talk to you guys online. I know there's a lot of people out there that just have, that rarely wash their foundation brushes. And when you haven't washed your foundation brushes or your complexion brushes for a really long time, there, it is incredibly difficult to get them squeaky clean again. So this is my best trick for any brush that has been left uncleaned for a really long time, okay? So let me just pour a teeny bit. That's it. Seeing life says this better not be Mitch's cereal bowl. <laughs> it actually is. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to... I'm gonna clean two very dirty brushes of mine. It's my N14 brush. This is filthy, has tons of product on it. And this one is visibly very dirty too. This has tons of cream blush on it. It's my N17. Um, so I'm gonna run it in the bowl that has that mixture in it. I'm just gonna bounce it back and forth. I'm gonna break down that product. It's like I'm making like pancakes or scrambled eggs. <laughs> Your concealer brush is the first one I've successfully used for concealer. Oh my God, are you kidding me? That's incredible to hear. I love my concealer brush so much. Oh my God, thank you so much, you guys. I get breakouts when I use my foundation brush more than once. Yes, and that is a, that's a big thing. Nancy, oh my gosh, I really need this tutorial. Hi, Mitch. Oh, oh. hi, Nancy, sending you a big hug. Wow, that was so I know, Michelle, it's like you're cooking with me, okay. I got distracted reading the comments. <laughs> this is definitely good enough. So now I'm just gonna run it back and forth on my hand. Again, you don't have to use the palm of your hand. You could also do, if you have a silicone pad, you could run it along your silicone pad and just break down that product. But the olive oil is a great tool, like I said, to break down any waterproof products and also any built up complexion products. So if you have a foundation brush that you haven't washed in a really long time, olive oil is gonna be your best friend to really break down that stuff because oil breaks down oil, okay? So like oil is going to break down oily products. So if you just keep that in mind and you don't need a lot of it, just like a teeny little drop of it and it's instant. Okay. You wouldn't douse the olive oil overnight on brushes that haven't been. No, I would not do. I would never douse brushes in any kind of cleaning agent. Nikki, it's okay to get water up in the handles. No, it's not. You want to try to try to avoid it as much as you can, keep them down. and keep them down. This is why you're seeing me use. Like I'm trying my best to. You know, no one's perfect. Okay, you're gonna make mistakes, but try your best to keep your brushes at a downward angle. So then the water can't seep down it's going to seep down a little bit this is a reality that's natural you know there's no perfect perfect way to wash a brush okay but try your best to keep it facing down because that's going to help a lot so now this is the olive oil cleaned brush all makeup residue all makeup stains is off of it okay the nikki says still on sale at tiktok shop yes it is it will take, break down the glue from the inside of the handle if you get the handles wet yes it will. That's why you want to avoid, you want to minimize the amount of time your brushes are in water because that's going to minimize the risk of that. So being bio girl said, uh, hi Nikki, I'm okay. It was a rough week. Sending oh. bugs to you and Mitch for, and your fur babies. Oh, thank you being bio girl. You're so sweet. I'm so happy you're, you're, you're hopefully doing a little bit better. You need to make an appearance the voice. I know. I've seen purple shampoo used on little bristle brushes. Which is, what's the purple shampoo? Oh, purple shampoo? I would never use that, I'm sorry. Uh, purple shampoo is, purple shampoo, if you don't know, is a toning shampoo and it's gonna tone brassiness in your hair. The boys had to say hi. So purple shampoo is also extremely drying. That's why you wanna use it only like one, maybe two times a week if you're using it on your hair. It's a very drying formula. I would not use purple shampoo on your brushes. Okay, Beauty by Burning, does that disinfect the brushes as well as you clean them? What, which one, the olive oil or just, maybe ask that question one more time. <laughs> Stephanie says hi. Sorry if this is a repeat. Is it okay to use direct dry silicone mat to clean a brush in a pinch? A dry, yeah, I mean those like, I think they're called like um, uh, shift or something, like a shift thing. 
that's just to remove like the color of like, let's say you're using an eyeshadow brush and you use like a green eyeshadow. And then you wanna use the same exact brush to use for like a pink eyeshadow. If you run it in like one of those silicone, um, they're like a, they almost look like a, um, like a scrubbing kind of sponge. Switch, thank you, Catherine. Oh my gosh, I was, that was gonna, I was gonna go crazy trying to figure that out. Yeah, the switch. That's totally fine, but that's not gonna sanitize your brushes at all. It's just gonna take the color off of it. Um, so, um, Christina has a question she's asked a couple times. And know what? I didn't buy the Dyson yet. <laughs> I chickened out. But you guys sent me so many great recommendations on where to buy. Christina says, um, I always feel like my makeup never looks as good after I wash my brushes. It seems like it takes a while for it to look good again. Mm. So, Okay, so who says this? Christina? Christina. Christina says that you never, Christina, you say you never like the way your makeup looks after you wash your brushes. Um, so it sounds kind of like to me, like that maybe you like the way your brushes apply your makeup when they're like, when they're like broken in, like when they have like some product left over on them. To each their own, that is totally, you know, I, I can kind of see that in a way. You know, like they're they're not squeaky clean and they got like some product buildup on it. So inevitably you're probably getting your makeup done a little bit faster because it's got like some leftover makeup on it. If it's working for you, it's working for you. But if it ever causes breakouts, I would just avoid doing that. Just clean them. Is it okay to use to wash them with shampoo? It is, I just don't feel like it's antibacterial enough. And that's why I like to use Dawn because it is antibacterial. Technically all soap is antibacterial, but some soaps are going to be more, um, they're just going to break down and they're going to be a little bit more um, antibacterial than others, if that makes sense, you know? Like technically any soap is antibacterial because it's soap and it's cl it's cleansing. But I just feel like Dawn or a dish soap is going to just really deep clean your brushes. And I'm just, I'm all about deep cleaning because of sanitation purposes. It's the makeup artist in me that just can't, I can't just do a, a regular shampoo because I don't feel like it's cleaning my brushes enough. Okay, these guys are clean. I'm gonna dry down the handle. Again, it, it, I don't know if I stress this enough, but you really wanna dry down your handles before you just let them like live and dry down on their own. So, very important. So, some, some of, uh, I have a few more to wash. asking about, uh, about the Wayne Goss. Yeah, you, you have that, I gotta edit that. Um, yes. Nancy, I filmed my full face of Wayne Goss, and let me tell you, the makeup look is so beautiful. <laughs> I have so many great, I picked out so many great products for that video, and the way that makeup came out is absolutely stunning. I can't wait to post it. I just have some other videos that are like priority that need to come out first, if that makes sense. So it's coming very soon. Yeah, but what if we don't get it edited? <laughs> oh, Julie says, I've been loving your brush that they are awesome. How do you clean sponges and powder puffs? You know what? Okay, so let me, let me grab one. <laughs> I don't have one there nearby. Let me see if I have one in this bag. But let me just talk, it, talk you through it. So the way I like to clean my sponges, and I say my sponges because I have one. I have a dirty one in this bag. Yay, I can show you. Okay, this is just like a little e.l.f. Cosmetics dirty, very dirty sponge. So in my Pro Kit, I don't reuse sponges. I have in the past, now that I found like really inexpensive ones on Amazon, my AOA Pawpaw ones, they're $10 for a pack of six. I give them away to each client after every application. If I use it, I don't always use a sponge on my clients, if that makes sense. Powder puffs, I don't always use powder puffs either. My N14 brush has replaced a lot of the need for sponges and puffs. I know that sounds uh, maybe a little like um, biased, but <laughs> those that brush, that one brush really does do a great job of um, replacing that kind of product um, or tool. Yeah, so hold on. Let me tilt my camera down so Mitch doesn't get mad at me. So I just wet my sponge, okay? And um, this is the best way to clean your makeup sponges in my opinion if you use dawn like a liquid soap on your sponges or your or your powder puffs you're going to be standing there for eternity trying to get the suds out like 
I'm not even exaggerating. You're going to be standing there for eternity trying to get those suds out of your sponge or your powder puff. So get a bar soap. Once your sponge is wet, you just kind of smash it into the bar and run it back and forth. Now this requires a lot more water wasting because you need to be rinsing off the makeup that's coming out of the sponge as you're squeezing it. So, you know, if this bothers you, just know it requires a lot more water wasting to clean your sponges than your brushes. Because you need to make sure you rinse away that, that makeup residue that's coming out of your sponge as it comes out. Otherwise, it will just get sucked right back in. Okay, Nikki, I normally use dial antibacterial soap for sponges and brushes. Is that okay? It's fine. I've used dial before in a pinch. I don't feel like it suds well enough at all. I feel like it doesn't, um, it doesn't lather and it doesn't really get the job done as easily, in my opinion. Okay, there's still a little bit of makeup right here. Can you squeeze out really close to the camera? So can... Yeah. All right. So do you see how there's still suds coming out? You have to keep doing this with your sponges until you don't see any suds coming out. All right, suds free. Make sure you wring these out really, really well. Lay it flat. You do the same thing to clean your powder puffs. Um, it's that easy. I can't believe, how have we been on this live for 46 minutes? Okay, I'm gonna pop the camera up because we're done pretty much washing. And let me just take this time to make sure I answer any questions. Um, before it's too late. Um, do you find that silicone mats ruin your brushes? No, I don't. I think that if you're too harsh and you're pushing them, you're smashing them too much or too hard into the silicone mat, that's gonna happen if you're just too um, too rough with your brushes. So just make sure you're not smashing it down too hard because then you can damage your brushes. Brushes are very delicate. And if you buy good brushes, again, you wanna make sure you're not, um, you know, you want to make sure you're taking good care of them because they are an investment. Let me throw this out. Okay, I missed a good question. And side note, by the way, the Dawn orange one, I think is now working much better than the blue one. Just, just to point that out. I'm glad I switched to the orange one, back to the orange one. I'm watching you from Belgium. Oh my God. Hi, back in Belgium. I use a puffer sponge one time and I throw them all in a launcher. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So you throw them in. Let me just read this comment really quick from Sarah. Sarah says, I use a puff or a sponge one time, then I throw it all in a lingerie bag and toss them in the washer every week. Um, that's actually a really great way to do it too, to be honest. And just make sure you put it on uh, like a gentle cycle and just do warm water and not hot water. And um, that's a great quick way to do it too. When is Mitch doing the voiceover video? It's coming soon. I promise you. It's coming really, really soon. It's going to be really fun. Uh, just want to say you're my favorite gal on IG. Oh my God. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like the video. Sorry if I talked about this, but do not recommend the makeup brush cleaners. Um, I, it's not that I don't recommend them, Karina. I just think that Dawn is the most cost-effective way and a bar soap is the most cost-effective way. I think that like some kind of like br like brush shampoos, they've never been my favorite. I've just, maybe hopefully a better one will come out soon. I'm really hoping for that because there's never been a good one that I've like been wowed over, you know? So hopefully one comes out someday and I, I will gladly buy it. And if it works, I'll be thrilled. Have you tried anything from Catrice Cosmetics? No, I haven't. Um, so I said, uh, any other questions? This is totally random, but thank you for suggesting the Garnier and Nice Slow Water. You switched me over a little bit. Who said that? I think it's I. It's I. It's I. Um, okay, so somebody said that. Th somebody said thank you for suggesting the Garnier My Slow Water. I am so happy you're loving it. I go through bottles of that stuff. Um, any other questions about washing brushes before we head off? Oh, being by all over your brushes. I'm so happy. I hope you, I know you're gonna love them, but I hope you love them as much as I do. I noticed that you don't rinse off the bar soap for too long. Wait, hold on, let's see this really quick. Help, I noticed that you don't rinse the, off the bar soap for too long when I, oh my gosh. Oh, what's that comment? There is still soap residue. You, Yeah, make sure you rinse off the bar soap in between. Of course, that's gonna help too. Um, reduce like the sudsiness too, if you're trying to. 
Shampoos seem to be used a lot, exactly. Sylvia, that's 100% why I don't use shampoos. Shampoos don't have the sudsine power that like a dish soap does, that's just the reality. And you know, just make sure you're, um, you know, Dawn, I've never had a problem with the drying out my, my brushes. And that's just me being really real. Like a lot of people say like, it's gonna break down, it's gonna dry out your brushes, it's gonna make them dry and coarse. I've never experienced that. And I've been washing my brushes with that, with Dawn for the last, you know, 10, 15 years. So Cinema Secrets is great, but Cinema Secrets is just a spot cleaner. It's not a deep cleaner. It's something that you use in a pinch and it's not something you want to rely on. Um, okay, Amanda, I want to, okay, so hold on, let's read this. Which BK Beauty Brush is drying next to the sponge? Oh, it's one of my favorite bronzer brushes. Look at this big bad boy. Uh, it's a 102. So notice I'm kind of reforming and reshaping. Like if it's a brush that has long, big um, fibers, you don't want to just like leave it like, like that to dry because guess what? It's going to dry like that. So if you have longer, um, longer fiber brushes, you want to reshape it. So that way while it's drying, it's going to dry back in the same shape that they were designed. Does that make sense? Same with my brushes too. I need to reshape this little guy. So now he's domed again. Any other questions about washing my brushes? Has anyone had a hard time washing any of my brushes? Let me know. You can always ask more questions too. Once this video is uploaded, you can, if you forgot one or you didn't get your question answered, you can make sure you just leave it in the, just, um, the comment section, ask your question there and I'll be able to like see it and get back to you too. Um, do you like those nets? I don't use them, Kim. I think it's just way too time consuming and tedious. It's always just work for me to like, like I said, to like reshape the brush and lay them flat. That's always worked for me. But they do sell those nets if you feel like, you know, if you have the time to like pop the net on each time after every wash, I don't have the time for that. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this up. And if there's any other questions that I missed, again, please just leave them in the comments. I hope this was helpful. I really feel like this is helpful and I get asked so often how I clean my makeup brushes. So if you or any of the people that have asked me this in the past, this video was for you and I really hope you found it helpful. I'm gonna leave um, links to even Dawn in my description box and of course like the Pear and Spirit, the bar soap, I'll list everything that I use and I'll find a link for the silicone mat too that way you have one, you can just, um, you know, there's, they're super inexpensive, like on Amazon, I'll leave a couple links for different shapes and stuff. You could also get like, they make like a actual mitt that you put your hand in that has like the grooves and everything. That's really cool too. I've actually been meaning to buy myself one of those, but I just haven't yet. But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for all the love on my brushes. Thanks to everyone who's purchased them and reached out and said that they love them. I am so appreciative. But Mitch, say bye. Bye, everybody. Mitch says bye. All right, good luck cleaning your brushes. And again, leave comments or leave your questions in the comments if you have any others. All right, love you guys. Thanks for joining me.